Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, this is a recommendation by a viewer of my last live stream. He asked me to react to This is why you should pray Tahajud by Mufti Menk. So I personally, admittedly, as a revert, haven't prayed Tahajud yet. Maybe after this video, I will decide to do just that. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heavens, and He calls out, calling out, saying, what does He say? He says, who is there seeking forgiveness at a time when the third of the night remains? Who is there seeking forgiveness so I can forgive? Who is there repenting so I can accept? Who is there asking me any of their needs so that I can give? If you look carefully at that hadith, there is no precondition of having fulfilled tahajjud or having read salah. It's an open invitation from Allah to say, you want to seek forgiveness? Here I am. You want to repent, here I am. You want to ask me anything, here I am. I know of people who set their clocks for the time of tahajjud, even if, even if, subhanallah, they haven't fulfilled the tahajjud, but they will get up and call out to Allah, feeling the presence that, you know what? I can, this call is from Allah, yaqeenan. There is no doubt that Allah is calling. Imagine when you get up and you can actually look at the time and say, wow, Allah is calling. Allah is calling me. Oh Allah, I'm the one. I'm seeking. Oh Allah, me. I want forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive me. I have a need. I'm calling out to you. I know that you're, you're here to answer me. Call out to Allah. It actually makes perfect sense. As you guys know, if you've been following this channel, I dabbled in all kinds of spiritual practices in the past. And there I found out as well that the spiritual connection to the divine, to God, is the strongest at night. Therefore, it makes only sense to seek God, to seek repentance at night. I guess I have to try it. He will give you what you want. If it is Tawbah and Istighfar, He will forgive you. If it is anything else, He will grant it to you when He knows it's the right time. He will give you what He knows is better for you. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it tonight, man. No so excuses. The time of Tahajjud, that is the most blessed time of the night. It's the early hours of the morning, we call it, right? The, the last part of the night is the time of Tahajjud, its splendor, its goodness, its greatness. Meaning the value of that night is not based on the Tahajjud, but it's the night itself. The fact that Allah is calling out and Allah descends to the lowest heaven. So the hadith about the descending to the lowest part of the heaven, I heard a lot of dispute about that, not in terms of authenticity, but I heard a lot of dispute of the meaning when it comes down to it, I believe, from the Asharis. I'm not too sure, don't quote me on that. However, what I heard about it is that ultimately, it is always the lowest part of the night somewhere on this earth, right? So when it's daytime in Europe, it's nighttime in Australia. When it's daytime in South America, it might be nighttime in Asia. And therefore, I heard an interpretation of that hadith that implied that Allah is always there. There is no physical dissension of Allah because yet again, he is metaphysical. He doesn't have to go to a specific place place. He is spaceless. He is timeless after all. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about this. Do something. We will call out to Allah, but we will also engage in ibadah. Ibadah meaning acts of worship. Call out to Allah. I need to thank Allah, praise Allah, subhanallah. So there are a few things you should do and could do. Number one, dhikrullah. 
the praise of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. The Quran is part of dhikrullah. You can read the Quran. It's a blessed time. Subhanallah, you would actually be encouraged to engage in Salatul Tahajjud with units of two, two, two. Salatul Layli, Mathna, Mathna. The Prophet ﷺ says that the, the, the Salah of the night is read in twos. So we read them in twos. That's the recommended, the proper way of doing things. Okay, yet again, let me know in the comment section, what does he mean by that? Is it two rakas now? Is it like Fajr prayer? And then every second would be optional? Or how does it look like? Should I do two rakas, just regular? And then again and again, if I want to, Explain it, please, in the comment section. You read them in twos, but on condition that you are doing it with your whole heart, no rush at all, and you do it for the sake of Allah. At that juncture, and at that time, when you put your head on the ground in sujood for the sake of Allah, you are actually the closest you could ever be to Allah. Aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that a slave can be to his Lord is when he is in prostration. You know, when you want to look at the value of prostration, ask yourself, would I ever put my, he my head down in that condition in front of a king or a, or a person or a, or a monument or a Nobody. statue? Nobody. Absolutely God. not. Never. Yes. Worship is and this is quite shocking to see here in Asia where I live. Many people prostrate in front of golden Buddha statues. It just feels so unnatural, man. When you see that, you just know it is wrong. They are bowing their heads down to Buddha statues, as I said, or even to so-called perceived enlightened masters, puppets even, of old deceased Buddhist monks. It is very unnatural when you see it. Allah and Allah alone. So that's why no matter how big I may be, how wealthy, how powerful, how healthy, how, how many kids and grandkids and great grandkids I have, but I am nothing but a slave of Allah, the Lord of the worlds. I will drop yeah. in sujood for the sake of Allah. Yeah, once you get it, you get it. But the Christians, when they hear slave, they are just mocking Islam. We are children of God. Don't you understand? They don't understand the relationship, the slave to master relationship. Ultimately, God, Allah, is in control of everything. Don't you understand? Control over everything. The moment when you are born and the moment when you die. Your father is not in control over the moment when you die. He might be somewhat in control when he decided to have children. But after all, when exactly you got born, he's in no control of whatsoever, let alone on the day of your demise. So those things are in the hands of Allah, of course. And this is what we mean when we say we are simply slaves to Allah. He decides over everything. <laughs> Surah Sajda speaks about those who forsake their beddings at night in order to worship Allah. Allah praises them and tells them for you is Jannah. Jannah. You really believe in the last day because to worship Allah at night, nothing will inspire you unless you really believe in Allah and the last day. For sure. Sacrificing your sleep for God alone. We have problems. We want solutions to our problems. At one stage, I tried asking people who came to me to say, I have a problem. And I tell them, did you call out to Allah in the last third? So many people used to say no, that I stopped asking. I just used to inform them, try calling out to Allah. Imagine we're saying, try calling out to Allah. What try? You're supposed to start off by calling out to Allah. If you have, if you have a problem and you haven't made tahajjud or you haven't called out to Allah at the time of tahajjud and you are going to seek solution elsewhere, you've lost the plot. This is generally a wake-up call for me, man. I'm going to do it Allah tonight, inshallah. The solution to your problem, Allah has everything and you haven't yet called out to him and you're coming to me and to others to help you to resolve a matter when Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal was not called out to. Where is your ibadah of the night? You need it. 
Subhanallah. Yeah, it's extremely powerful what he says here because ultimately people don't have their priorities straight and they will seek in the external world. They will ask their mama, their daddy, they will ask friends, they will ask people that don't even mean much to them about a device. But ultimately, we always have to seek God first. This is the whole meaning of Islam, to seek God first, to submit to him alone. And therefore, if you're looking for an answer, who would you ask other than God first? Allah guide us. So when we speak of Rasulullah I guarantee you and I'm telling you, he did not need to call out every day and to make dua and istighfar. He was not a person who was sinful at all, but he did it so that we could follow that example. Here we are claiming to be the lovers of Muhammad Wasallam. How many of us have read Salatul Tahajjud in the last 30 days? I haven't. I admit. Gone by. You haven't even read Tahajjud. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. Thank you very much for the recommendation on my last live stream. I truly enjoyed this, and moreover, it motivated me to finally pray Tahajud. It just makes all the sense in the world that the spiritual connection, as I said, I learned about this in the past, is the strongest at night. And moreover, that this is where we truly sacrifice our last portion of the sleep for God alone, which reaffirms, of course, our belief in God, because who else would do it? As he said correctly, if you really get up at that time to pray to God, you surely believe in God. So this is absolutely beautiful. Let me know in the comment section, guys, about the questions that I asked you, and let me know as well if you're going to pray Tahajud prayer. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support this channel. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.